Hello and greetings from Iceland, but this is my Sunday update where I will be covering uh, what is now in this moment happening on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, like usual, there is always something new to tell you about. So I'm going to start with a briefing about the alarm that we got a few days back when everything was turned upside down and the civil protection agency uh, closed the region. But uh, things have chilled down and it is not believed that uh, an eruption is uh, Imminent. But I did have a read today that uh, scientists agree upon that uh, there is constant uh, inflow of magma, magma intrusions, meaning of course that the risk of volcanic eruption is uh, far from over. And what we have seen now, Sunday, 7th of March, is increased earthquake activity again. And it has actually been pretty bad. Many of those earthquakes are from 3 to 5. And the last big one struck uh, last night, around 3 o'clock. Then we had another one today, around 4. And those earthquakes can be felt very well on the capital region. And uh, like I mentioned the other day, people are getting very nervous about it. And I can add that uh, my sister who lives in Reykjavik came here up north where I'm now over the weekend. And she was really, really happy about to get away from this for a while. And it's the same story with her as so many others. When the earthquake start, people are asking themselves, is this a big one coming? Should I go running out of the house? Or is it just uh, one of the small ones who does nothing else but to make me nervous? And people are nervous because we have this forecast hanging over us or an earthquake close to Reykjavik measuring up to 6.5. And that would mean huge problems. So that risk isn't over. And uh, when this earthquake storm is going on so close to this uh, epicenter of the potential 6.5, the risk is even greater, or that the big one could be triggered. So this is the status with Reykjavik. Scientists do not believe that an eruption is imminent, as they see it today. But that might change in a moment, and there is lots going on there under the ground. But I also wanted to mention the town Grindavík. I have spoken about this before, but uh, Grindavík, the fishery town, is just next door to Mount Thorbjörn, where all this started. Then the earthquake storm moved away from the town, it came back, and it's been dancing all around the peninsula. The earthquake situation in Grindavík was getting a bit better, since the swarm has been now closer to the capital, but it is picking up again close to the town. And I've been looking at interviews with the people who live in Grindavík, and they describe it as the ground is like floating. They are feeling earthquakes every few hours, and the bigger ones in between, but uh, that's not the worst part because uh, they have always this risk that an eruption could uh, come to the surface very close to the town. I was uh, reading just today that uh, many people left the town before the weekend, got themselves hotel rooms or rented summer houses just to get away from the town, not because of the direct risk, but because they were so tired of this, because uh, each and every time they wake up or can't sleep, a whole bunch of questions must be rushing through their mind, wearing them out. So I'm really, really not surprised uh, that my friends in Grindavík are uh, nervous. But Grindavík is also a town that I happen to know pretty well. I was working there when I was around 20 years old. We have what is called the winter fishery season, and uh, I used to stay there for a few months at a time. And this boat is actually a workplace that I had for like three months there. So I have lots of feelings uh, to this town, Grindavík. And the winter drive I'm offering you now is a part of a video that is covering the largest story of the town. Not the geology, just the mentality and town and such. They are so fortunate to have uh, strong companies who have not lost their fishing quota to other towns. Plenty of work there. Kids learn to work at uh, young age. And they learn also that the dollars and the euros who are paying for our import are not created in the shopping malls or in the banks. So I always get a bit of uh, old Iceland feeling there and uh, my favorite uh, coffee shop in Iceland is there. Small raw coffee shop filled with uh, fishery memorabilia and only like uh, 10 15 meters from the edge of the pier. So it's possible to sit there and watch the ships come in and uh, deliver the cuts into the fish processing plants. There. So if you come to Iceland, I recommend this town. And it would be so terrible to see this town go under lava. I've known about it for a long, long time that uh, this is one of the towns that are at some risk. But I didn't give it any serious thoughts because I thought it was so unlikely that uh, the Reykjanes Peninsula would uh, start another circle of unrest that could last for uh, 
up to 200 years. So this is a status in the moment and I just uh, saw today a new map over potential lava flow. It is not pointing at Grindavik in the moment, but this is uh, the fourth picture of this kind that I've seen in four days. So it's changing every day. And that is because this earthquake swarm is just dancing all around the peninsula. And it is almost a year ago since the Civil Protection Agency held a meeting in Grindavik where they prepared the people there for evacuation. But there are, however, many good escapes routes from there. So I have no reason to think that the evacuation could not take place very swiftly. There is still no chance to predict into the future, longer or shorter. There is no way to say if there will be an eruption in the coming hours, weeks or months. And it is no way to say where. But what we can say for sure is that this region is very well guarded. Seismometers all around and almost daily reports about uh, satellite imagery showing how the land has been deforming. It is uh, absolutely amazing to see how sensitive these uh, detection systems are nowadays, especially because uh, they are able to detect uh, pulses showing lava movements that are occurring uh, while hundreds of other earthquakes are going on and to read information from that. So the warning that they gave us the other day was very real and I believe that they had every reason to do so. Even if it turned out to be not a false alarm, but full reason to put everything on alert. Because nobody saw that coming that uh, this uh, lava moments would uh, stop. And I have read that uh, the lava intrusion stopped at two kilometers depth. So for Icelanders, this is in a way like uh, disaster TV series in many episodes. The lava is there yesterday, but it's closer today. Will it stop? Or will we see a wall of fire up here? And when? And I do also think that this warning that we had in last week was good for us. Warning systems were put to the test, and the part of Icelanders who have been careless about this thing got a reminder about what kind of country they are living in. And lots of scientists have stepped forward with information that uh, maybe aren't new, but not so much in the discussion until now. And that will be the subject in one of my next videos, or the Krisuvik Vulcan system, or how far it stretches into the Cartwell region. And this is Iceland, always surprising me, even if I consider myself to be a professional Icelander. So what I'm doing now is that I'm preparing to be on the road doing very little else than to gather footage. And while I will be on the road, I will be updating. And the first long video I made about uh, Icelandic volcanoes was uh, going over the question what five volcanoes will be erupting in near future in Iceland. And the Reykjanes Peninsula, it was just so far off because we have giant volcanoes like Katla and Hekla and Bárðabunga and Grímsvatn. They are all due. So even if this situation in the Reykjanes Peninsula would fade out, we are still left with the other ones. But as I see it now, the situation is just getting more and more tense and I will be uploading longer and shorter updates as we move into next week. And with that, I'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island Iceland. You can live on it, but it tastes like shit.